Namwali Serpel joined the English department in uh, fall 2008. She works on 20th century and contemporary fiction and also on theories of reading. Please welcome Namwali. So I mostly work on narrative. Um, I always felt like trying to imitate poets or trying to capture what it feels like to read a poem it's like looking, trying to look someone in both eyes at once. You end up just staring at their nose. Um, and I feel um, privileged to be uh, asked to read a poem uh, since it's not quite my genre. Um, but speaking of uncertainty, I do work on uncertainty in narrative. Um, and this poem seems to me to have captured um, what I think about uncertainty, um, or perhaps more accurately, what I hope someday to believe about it. There's a precursor poem to Elizabeth Bishop's The Gentleman of Shalott, uh, which is uh, Tennyson's The Lady of Shalott. I'm not going to impose uh, Tennyson on our time schedule today, um, but I will say that that poem is about um, a woman in a tower who is weaving, um, and she has a mirror in front of her loom so that she can see behind her through the window what's going on outside in Camelot. It's an Arthurian uh, legend. And uh, the crisis of the poem is when uh, she sees uh, Sir Lancelot in that mirror and decides to turn around and look. Um, and at that moment, she takes three paces across her small room and uh, the loom seems to explode and unravel and the mirror cracked from side to side. And this seems to be what uh, Elizabeth Bishop is taking up in her poem. Of the two, I think hers is the better half, so to speak. The Gentleman of Shalott. Which eye's his eye? Which limb lies next the mirror? For neither is clearer nor a different color than the other, nor meets a stranger in this arrangement of leg and leg and arm and so on. To his mind, it's the indication of a mirrored reflection somewhere along the line of what we call the spine. He felt in modesty his person was half looking glass, for why should he be doubled? The glass must stretch down his middle, or rather down the edge, but he's in doubt as to which side's in or out of the mirror. There's little margin for error, but there's no proof either, and if half his head's reflected, thought, he thinks, might be affected. But he's resigned to such economical design. If the glass slips, he's in a fix, only one leg, etc. But while it stays put, he can walk and run and his hands can clasp one another. The uncertainty, he says he finds exhilarating. He loves that sense of constant readjustment. He wishes to be quoted as saying at present, half is enough. <laughs> 